Hello and welcome to Claret and Blue for a brand new, hopefully, mini-series on the channel, this will be dependent whether people like it or not, called The Debate. John. The Debate. So we've got a few topics sent in by supporters of where we're going to argue for and against. Uh, today's episode is... Do we think Aston Villa should move away from Villa Park? It could go down like a lead balloon already. <laughs> so this is a conversation that's been happening on social media for a long time since all the North Stand redevelopment, which yep. is now not going ahead this summer. And do we actually need to move away from uh, Villa Park to have a fresh start and new infrastructure and whatnot? Mm. So this is a talking point that happens amongst the fan base anyway. Now, the premise of the debate is that one of us will be for, one of us will be against... And it might not necessarily be that that is our opinion, but whatever side of the argument you get given, you have to kind of go with it as if it is your own opinion. Okay, yep. Okay? The jeopardy here is that I've told you to prepare little bits of arguments for both sides, because as of recording, we don't know whether we're fighting for or against. And there's two pieces of paper in this mug, which I have cleaned since the last episode, (laughs) for and against. And I'm going to give you the opportunity to pick it out and see which side of the argument you're fighting for. Okay. Okay? Yep. This is whether you're for leaving Villa Park, or whether you're against leaving Villa Park. Thank God for that. Against. Against. <laughs> Damn. John is against leaving Villa Park. Just to prove it. I am for leaving Villa Park in this scenario. I will say this is not my own opinion, but thank God we had a bit of prep time, because I've prepared some bits for both sides. Um... <laughs> Do you want to go first or shall I? I think you should go first. I think most people... So yeah. I, did, I did a tweet yesterday for this, uh, or yesterday as we're filming this anyway, to ask people, if you are one of the people that thinks we need to leave Villa Park, can you just explain why to me so I can use yeah, some yeah. of that in my argument yeah. if, I, if I'm drawn on that side? Most people want to stay at Villa Park. I think that's fair to say. So you've got the, the easier side of the argument here. You don't need to give much thought to this whatsoever. I'm not the one who's going to get abused in the comments. Well, no. like I said, it's not my opinion. I've just got to fight, fight <laughs> I, I said that so you could come in with that. Uh, um, no, I, go on then. Why should we yeah. stay at Villa Park? Well, firstly, it's probably worth kind of saying for the club's part, there's been no, um, from what I've been told from within the club, there's no um, conversation. Yeah, that no isn't something that they're considering either. Yes, things can change, but as of right now, there has been no conversation or discussion about leaving Villa Park or relocating, building a new stadium elsewhere. Um, obviously, this comes, as you say, done after uh, Chris Eck has kind of shelved plans to uh, rebuild the North Stand, which would obviously take, was going to take the capacity up to 50,000 by um, the summer of 2026. Work was supposed to start this summer. Obviously, that would have would have would have meant that Villa wouldn't play in front of um, a full capacity over the next two years. And this kind of arrives at my first point, probably not the, f- the most obvious point. Um, I suppose the most obvious point is, you know, it's, it's, Villa, Park. it's, it's Villa Park, right? <laughs> and we'll get to that. But, and this is something that Chris Heck touched on as well, the thought of playing either Champions League football or not even Champions League football, but just competing at the top end of the Premier League. This is, this is the best Villa team I've ever seen in my lifetime, um, which, you know, I'm 23, 24 now. And uh, obviously that's a, a lot of people as well who are similar ages to myself yeah. because we're doing so well. Mm. For me, I think that would have been almost like an own goal because we need the full backing of Villa Park. It is the best home advantage you can get. Um, and we've proven that <laughs> because of the run that we've just been on. Obviously that um, was lost uh, the other week, but... This is my first point of, I think we have to capitalise on what success could come and the incredible manager that we've got, the incredible players that we've got, everything has kind of been building up to this moment. I remember saying last year when we were uh, seventh, I think, um, about five games towards the end of the season, and I remember thinking or saying, this is like a moment in time where, you know, whatever happens from now, this is the moment where Villa could get back in Europe, that, you know, everything's going so well, can it get better? Yeah, it could. (laughs) We're a few points away from, like, second place. We're trying to get Champions League, we're we're in Europe, and not just in Europe, but trying to win a trophy in Europe. We're um, hopefully going to go far in the FA Cup at this, when this goes out, I hope we're still in the FA Cup. (laughs) Yeah, my first argument is that knocking down Villa Park at this stage, again, it's probably not the most obvious argument, but... I think this it, it would basically it wouldn't ruin, but it would go some way to hampering what you know 
should be some of our most successful years. Mm. The kind of key behind all of that, again, we're talking about leaving Villa Park, but that in itself is kind of proof of why Villa Park is so important, I think. If we just... You know, we can't just pick up Villa Park, including the whole end, and put it in the NEC. It, there's just no way that could ever be the same. And I think everything that comes with the package of Villa Park, as I say, it's the best home advantage because it's not just because it's history, but there's proof there that this this place is. You know, it might sound a bit cringe, but it's special. You can't you can't just build a stadium and say this is Aston Villa's home stadium and, and it's going to be as loud and as raucous as it can get at Villa Park. Uh, it's just not going to happen. Where do you where do you go to start building a whole end? Everyone knows that that's the, the kind of um, the engine of Villa Park, if that makes sense. That's where the noise is going to come from, for example, um, in a new stadium, which would probably likely be a bowl. Where does that start and end? Who buys tickets? And that, you know, it's just, it's so complicated and it doesn't, don't even think about that. But yeah, just as kind of my first point, Dan, of Villa Park as a home advantage, probably not necessarily what you thought I'd go with straight away. Um, but the whole kind of discourse around you know oh, we shouldn't be knocking down the north stand because we need 42,000 in Villa Park I think that's the kind of point that I'm going for straight away um, in terms of that it kind of answers my point around the home advantage of Villa Park hmm. why would you take that away yeah. even if it was to bring in 8,000 or whatever or to make it easier to get home after the game when the purpose of the football club is to win football matches and that at home is the purpose of Villa Park? Yeah, I kind of, I kind of get it. I mean, I, we've come at this video from two different approaches. Really, I know I said like prepare little bits for whether you're for or against. Yeah. You're kind of coming to me almost with bullet points, whereas I've prepared like a bit of a, <laughs> I don't want to say a speech because that absolutely oversells it. But in a court case, when a, a, a lawyer says this is our closing argument, why that person is guilty, and they kind of go off for a couple of minutes. Yeah, yeah. I've kind of done that for for and against. Obviously, I've thrown my four argument into the <laughs> recycling bigs. I don't need it for this episode. But just to that point about kind of like this headache of rebuilding the North Stand and when do we do it and we want the home crowd and whatever else. To me there's no good time to do anything like that. And to remove some of that headache, just build a new stadium then. Mm-hmm. Build a new stadium yeah, in yeah. another part of of even the, the local area or close to the, the city centre, whatever it is. Keep Villa Park, keep that home advantage, keep it going for two years or whatever it is, have a humongous send off and build you a shiny new stadium around the corner simultaneously mm. and you can still have a good home form at a new stadium look at Spurs they're, they're probably better now than they were at, at White Hart Lane so this idea of just like it's that stadium that's made our home form good it's the players on the green bit of grass that <laughs> are good and they can do that at another stadium no? Uh, I I, I disagree. I, uh, so, 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 <laughs> so, so do so I pro- I've got to fight <laughs> both corners. Yeah no but <laughs> yeah no you're not wrong in terms of you know my argument about being the on-pitch performance is impacted by Villa Park. I just think, I just think it's very true. Like, it, it, it's it is it really is the it's the epicenter of Aston Villa, and I've been lucky enough now to go to all the Premier League stadiums. I'm not saying it's the Villa, there's nothing like Villa Park. But it's not it, just it really you're Villa no, Park. No, no, so absolutely not. I tell you what, I went to Goodison the other week. So underwhelmed. Really? So underwhelmed. No offence to Everton fans if you're watching, you're probably not. But when they build a new stadium, yeah, but so fact, that's my side and I can me. see why, and I can <laughs> okay. see why because it, it doesn't doesn't rub shoulders with Villa. It doesn't for me. Even Villa fans might disagree with that. Who go there on away days, and maybe that's a different perspective because um, I'm in the the kind of the, the media end or whatever uh, in the press box. But this <coughs> it looked compared to Villa anyway. It looked relatively small, um, in parts, quite not run down, but it needed more than a lick of paint. You can see why they're moving. But I suppose when you do but go Villa- to their new stadium, you might feel totally differently. But when you go to Spurs, well, this you is don't the, go there this, this this is my next point. Though. On Villa Park, we want what Spurs have got. But no, I don't. No, I don't want the bowl, but we want the <laughs> new shiny infrastructure, everything fresh, hospitality offering. Like, I oh, will get into my argument okay, in a second. That, that I can understand, the, the hospitality and the experience. I understand that. But I don't... Would I swap... For example, if you put that Tottenham Stadium next to Villa Park um, and painted the seats claret or something, I'd still walk into Villa Park and have a... and feel more... But I think that's because you're a Villa fan, though. 
That's my point. I think if but two, that's, but if two neutrals go to both stadiums, yeah, but that is my point. But we're not talking about neutral. I'm talking about as a Villa fan, I'd rather walk into Villa Park and support yeah. my team at Villa Park. Mm. Uh, and as, as a player, you know that that will have a more of a galvanising effect yeah. because the fans there that Villa Park is. Do you know what I mean? Uh, we haven't. Aston Villa hasn't been at Villa Park for its whole. Um, you know what I mean, there hasn't been forty-two thousand there for 150 years, and it's not even the same. Um, you won't even look the same of you know what it used to for you know. Oh, it's a bit like I don't know whether this reference will be lost on you. It's a bit like Trigger's Broom, isn't it? For many fools and horses. I like Ulin Fools and but I haven't. So you, oh, sorry, sort of right. Like having this broom for 30 odd years, uh, yeah, but it's yeah, had yeah. six new heads and five yeah. new handles. It's like <laughs> Villa Park isn't, it's been there 100 odd years, but yeah. how it looked then to yeah. now, like the whole hand's 30 years old, the yeah. new Trinity stand is 20 years old. But I just, it's like, it's I, I all think, still quite but I new, think, really. Like now more than ever, when there's, let's be honest, there's a lot to not like about football in 2024. I don't mean Aston Villa, we're great, but, <laughs> you know, the money. Uh, involved. I don't just mean in terms of what fans pay for tickets and stuff. I, I mean the transfer fees, you know, state-linked ownership. Mm-hmm. There's there's all sorts going on, and it's uh, a lot. There's a lot. You know, there's a massive discourse around football, which isn't great. Um, but in terms of Aston Villa, I suppose we've been, you know, mid-table in the Championship for a year. We've been struggling against relegation. As I say my lifetime, Villa have finished as high as sixth, and nothing more. But they've finished as low as you know, as I said, mid-table in the championship, playing for promotion, relegation. We've had a mass, you know, really turbulent uh, twenty years or so, and this is going to sound obvious, but the one constant is going to Villa Park, and it's it's just the identity of Aston Villa. And as I said before, there's nothing like it. There really isn't. Yes, we want to see more fans in the stadium, and this is kind of getting on to another point. But you can do that at Villa. Yeah. I know it's difficult, but you can do it. There was a plan to get sixty thousand there. There's obviously a viable plan. There was no, um, you know, Christian Persson didn't just make up a number and, <laughs> you know... He might have done. And, and, draw, <laughs> and draw a big Villa Park on a piece of paper. There, there was clearly a plan there, else you wouldn't be, um, you know, putting it out to fans and, and everything else. But, yeah, you know, so Villa for me, I've, you know, been to a lot, so it is it's just grand. The, the whole, the feeling you get is something that you can't replicate mm. anywhere else. Uh, Villa fans or non-Villa fans and Villa fans are important to that because this is where they go to support their team uh, and if they're happy <laughs> supporting their team then the players on the pitch are going to play better because it's going to be a better atmosphere that sort of thing but then also well, you still can improve Villa Park and make it bigger mm. yes it's difficult and I understand that but 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 you can <laughs> Shall I read you what I've prepared? Yep And you can Pick holes Pick holes in it yeah I believe it's time for Aston Villa to move away from Villa Park. Whoa, do you? It's a big decision for our can-do-no-wrong owners to make, but progress starts with a brave decision. (laughs) I love what Villa Park represents, as you've mentioned, John, but what's to say that we can't build a new stadium that takes into account our iconic history and traditional architecture? There's a lot of talk about a new stadium being a bowl. In a new stadium, which would probably likely be a bowl. That's not what I'm pitching. I want the red brick and the whole end steps and the the iconic stands. I don't want this bowl-like, modern, chrome-looking toilet seat thing. I want (laughs) new, fresh, but kind of uh, harks back to our tradition that we've currently got at Villa Park. When your family gets too big for your house and the council won't approve your loft extension, you log on to Rightmove and you move house. Granted, that analogy doesn't exactly work, but we need to think big. (laughs) A 5,000 increase in capacity by filling in the corners of the North Stand. No way. We need... <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> no, no way. We need a 60,000-seater stadium. Look at Spurs. We need a slice of that commercial pie. A new stadium allows us to finally move to a location with usable public transport links, never mind expanding Whitton Station and giving it a lick of paint. We need to get 60,000 people in and out of New Villa Park efficiently and quickly. We can expand on the Villa Live plans that the club have, build a club shop mega store, get a Villa museum open, Ian Taylor can cut the ribbons, uh, get an on-site hotel, the opportunities are huge. That's all I've written, but just on the back of that, we talk a lot about FFP or PSR and commercial opportunities, Spurs' revenue being doubles Villa, double of Villas. A lot of that will come from this new match day hospitality offerings they have. Villa need to tap into that. Brand deals and opportunities, are we not calling it Adidas Villa Park? 
the Adidas Holt End, whatever it is. <laughs> well, I mean, that one is but the Adidas yeah. North Stand. Okay. And we get 50 million for that, and that allows us to buy this player and progress as a yeah. club. Is Villa Park not holding us back a little bit, John? The commercial element is um, one of two key elements. It's commercial and transport. Those are the two reasons why fans are debating on uh, social media. Uh, to be fair, the capacity increase as well is also needed because a lot of fans can't get tickets. But the, the commercial side, I, th- I, th- I think Tottenham you know, is the example that most people will go to. But you've got to understand that they've been playing Champions League football for many years. They've been in Europe for 10 years. They're in London. They're in London, which is the key bit here. They've tapped into the NFL market and stuff like that. Again, London is the reason for that. Um, So Villa don't have some of those advantages. But I think Villa would like to get to a stage where they become not just a sporting venue, but a venue for... Yeah, for concerts. Entertainment. Yeah, yeah. If, if you're like the NEC and you're nearby, wherever it is, and yeah. Beyonce comes into town, it's it's not a question of, oh, let's make that football stadium work for this thing. It's That's the venue that Taylor Swift is going to come to and Villa get a slice of that as well. <laughs> Swifties at Villa Park. <laughs> You'd be there. Um, <laughs> that could almost be used as kind of leverage to suggest that this is why Villa Park we should stay at Villa Park though why because it's, we're, it's barely cut out for football entertainment services sometimes but, uh, not, yeah. but we're doing these things now we're doing concerts yeah. and we're putting more events on um, you know we're building things outside Villa Park uh, you know a huge area for um, entertainment there is going to be a mega store uh come the summer, I believe. Um, obviously, that will be in, tied in with the Adidas element as well. So everything around Villa Park is improving and changing. Um, concerts, to say, are happening. So all these things can happen at Villa Park. And I, this kind of goes to the transport element because, you know, how, how do all these people get there without a massive... Uh, without a bad experience, basically. Um, and this is something that has to be improved. And, you know, Villa have an independent uh, transport... Um, kind of officer who's looking at all of these elements like the park and ride stuff that they did uh, previously they spend time during games kind of working out different areas uh, of kind of the local area at least about where car parks can be mm. um, all those different things I, I won't go into too much detail We a lot of this detail actually we covered in the video about Villa Park when um when the plans were unveiled a couple of months, a few months, yeah, few like, months back now. It was now. like a factory down the road, the way we could get a thousand cars on that we've never stuff used like that. before, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, and that, maybe link that in the comments soon, because yeah. that, that, that kind of painted the picture of what Villa are doing, and I can't remember all of it right now. Another one of my points, really, is I think for the owners, the thought of knocking down Villa Park, you know, that's some decision. Do you know, I, I know this is kind of the point that we're making, but when they bought the club, they must have walked into Villa Park, like... Like I still do now, and it might sound sad, but when I go there, I, I feel like proud to be an Aston Villa mm. supporter, and I feel like wow, like this place is, it's, it's you know, it's not exactly like you're walking when you're five or six years old for the first time, but you're still walking there and look around and think like, yep, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm up for this match day now. Mm. But I walk into, as I say, I walk into other stadiums in the Premier League, and I look around and think, yep, yeah, cool. I just, I just, I just think and that's not because I'm a Villa fan. I should go to Goodison Park and think like, oh yeah, this is, you know. But I think if Villa had a new stadium and it wasn't a generic bowl, because I don't like that either. I wouldn't want an Etihad at, at, at Villa. I but the point is, but walk into the they can't, and, and have then that there's, there's, no, there's no way they're going to, they can't, it, it'll be a bowl. It has to be for the for the size of the crowd. Because if they're going to build a stadium, it's going to be 60,000. It has to be. It can't be anything less. Mm. And for that to happen, you can't have, I mean, you could, but they won't do. Anfield is for, not, not a bowl, and that's pushing... But that Anfield's similar to Villa in the way that there's different building um, constraints. I mean, obviously, Anfield is the example that they've stayed at, <laughs> at their stadium and, and renovated it, which yeah, is yeah. obviously what this Villa is, will want to do. Yes, but the only thing with that, and this kind of plays against my argument, is that it's very difficult to build behind. Yeah. Um, speaking to the people who were const- going to construct the, uh, the new North Stand, they said... <coughs> The kind of an entire, um, you know, demolishing the stand is the just by far the easiest and most um, efficient, efficient way, yeah, efficient way of doing it without any issues. Uh, the Anfield Road stand and stuff, they've had lots of issues building that behind, and you can see now it's still being built. My main point, and I think it's what a lot of the fans will think, is that I just I feel like you risk losing your soul basically mm. if you leave Villa Park. The atmosphere of Villa Park is questioned, 
if you then move, <laughs> what you got a West Ham scenario happen, happen, yeah. you, potentially? I think is the is the downside of new stadiums. West Ham fans would love to be back at Upton Park, wouldn't yeah. they, rather than the London Stadium? Yeah. But the London Stadium is probably a bad example of a. Of yeah, a new it's almost like stadium. you can't use it. But I just yeah. think an atmosphere in a different stadium with a set of fans who are already questioning if their atmosphere is mm, great possibly. every game with a halt end. You know, and I think the atmosphere is you know, fine at Villa and it's better than most stadiums anyway. But just going into a new stadium, I'm, I, I, I just think it's it's riddled with risk. You're not where you're supposed to be in terms of, you know, um, where you are in, in, in Witten uh, and obviously near Aston. But going somewhere, I don't know where that would be, to a stadium that's just unrecognisable, presumably. Um, your home advantage is kind of sapped then. Yeah, again, the fans, all they've known is the whole end of Villa Park. There's so much tradition there and so much goes with it. I just think it's just, you've got to weigh up. What's the the reason? Well, it's for transport and it's for more um, fans in the stadium. It's not, by the way, for ticket prices and stuff. They, they will always be high. If anything, they could be higher yeah. if it's a new shiny airport-like stadium like Tottenham's because it's all, look at these facilities you've got. Yeah. Um, it's almost an excuse to charge more mm. Um so don't think the new stadium would kind of solve those issues. The issues it would solve would be transport, which is a big issue. But at Villa Park, you know, there's going to be improvements made. And is it so bad that <coughs> that you need to leave? I personally don't think so. And I've, you know, I've, I was a season to get older for many years as well. Um, and I've experienced how bad it is. But, you know, you've kind of, you kind of got used to it. I know that's not good enough to say you get used <laughs> to it because it's a load of money that you have to pay now for season tickets and whatnot. But um yeah, I just I just think everything weighed up. Um it is definitely a debate, but I don't think the risk involved is really worth no. you know, the fans who can't get to the the matches and they're on a season ticket waiting list might want to leave to get their season ticket, which I get, but the club have to obviously factor in the thirty thousand or whoever however many have already got season tickets, you know, you're on, you're on a waiting list, but you know you would be then for any other club. It's just how it it's how it is. It, Villa aren't different in in that regard. Yeah, I think the argument of like losing the soul is is valid, but also there's other clubs that have done it, and the clubs around the top end of the Premier League that have done it. Man City fans would have been very fond of Main Road. Arsenal fans of Highbury. Um, West Ham of Upton Park obviously mm. like I just mentioned Everton when they move or, uh, would be very fond of Goodison Park even though you think it's not, not as good as Villa Park no. I'm sure Man City fans are delighted with the Etihad and Arsenal with the Emirates uh, and so on and so forth Spurs obviously will be delighted with their new stadium and I think we as Villa fans will say Villa Park is one of the best stadiums in the country with bias but I don't think other I mean obviously a lot of other fans clubs would come to it and go it's very traditional it's very iconic yeah. whatever but I think new fans would come to England and think Spurs is like the benchmark and the Etihad probably and the Emirates. Villa Park looks old compared to those. Like it needs to be re- re-energised and refreshed. And I, my personal opinion is that you can do those things yeah. to the existing Villa Park. This but for the sake of this, I don't think it is a case of losing a soul. It's an opportunity to yeah. maybe refresh and bring in so much more commercial revenue that the on-the-pitch matters, you become mm. a better club for it. I don't think you're wrong in those statements. One thing I would say is I'd flip that actually and say that Villa Park, and I know you don't mean it's an old state, I know, I know, I know exactly what you mean, but there aren't many that are, again, I've said before, Villa Park is for me head and shoulders above Goodison, Ellen Road, all of those ones. But all of a sudden, it's going to be one of the few that are left that are like a proper, you know, traditional yeah. stadium. <coughs> and for me, it's the better, one of the best anyway. But, that can almost work in our favour, I think. And people will look at it and think, oh, this club is really, you know, it's got tradition, you can, you, you feel the history, that, you know, that sort of element, if, if you're a tourist or whatever coming to Villa Park. Um, that, I think, works for us. Because then all, all of a sudden, all the stadiums are bowls and all of them are modern and all of them are, you know I mean? You can modernise the facilities of Villa Park, but what you look at when you walk in the stadium and how you feel about it, I think is something that you can't buy and you can't, mm. that would not happen. If Villa Park moved into a big bowl like Tottenham's, I would walk in and think, wow, this is cool. The next week I'd walk in and just look around and then crack on. You know, but every time I go into Villa Park now, I look at the whole end and stare at it for like 10 seconds, which doesn't sound like a long time. <laughs> but you know what I mean? That's how yeah. I feel about it. And that's how you should feel about walking into your stadium. I just don't get that vibe at all with any of the ground. And it's not because I'm just a Villa fan. Go to the new Camp on a stadium tour or whatever. I, I was sitting there for about half an hour or something. Just, just literally just, 
you know, looking around because it's so, not because it's a massive stadium, but because it's so historic and you've so much has happened there. Do you know what I mean? Whereas other stadiums, if it's new, I just think, oh, you know, like the, the Etihad was the worst. It's just, it's lifeless outside. It's just steel and, you know, concrete. You just think, what, where, what is this? There's no life here. But it's just do you, dull. And do you not have to start from somewhere at some point? Is that not inevitable that clubs are going to have to... But why get rid of what we've done at Villa Park to make a new chapter because the transport links aren't very good? Mm. It just feels like... I know it's a you know a, a, a big thing because fans are the most important things about a football club. But, my God, like if the news came out of Villa leaving because uh, you know the spaghetti junction gets clogged up and there's not many parking spaces around, Jesus Christ, like... <laughs> It's scary for me that that again Villa haven't considered it. No, no. So no. you know we're led to believe. This but is just a talk saying, amongst fans. That's why we're doing. Yeah. It. There's no inside information here that this is on the horizon. I know. We're well, talk about it. the inside information is that it isn't. <laughs> so yeah. But do you know what I mean? I just think that those things can be improved, and it's worth in trying to improve them for the sake of staying at Villa Park. Mm. If it gets to the point where you can't improve the transport links, which I don't see how would happen, because there's always a you can always, always do something. Yeah, yeah, of course there's. Um, it might you know take a while, but for the sake of Stanford Villa Park, which in a few years will be, you know, you, you're going to look at it as one of the traditional stadiums or the best. I mean, it already is, but one of the few that are kind of remain, to be honest. Um, and it's a stadium that everyone would go to if you like your football and just kind of marvel at. Yeah, no, you would you just gaze upon it and think, wow, you know, even walking outside. I mean, the North Stand is a bit of an eyesore, let's be honest, and that does need to improve for sure but walking towards the hole there's nothing like that in my fancy scenario that we have moved I would like there to be some way of keeping the same whole and tent th- they would try to do that like having the whole tent and then the rest of it be but, a bowl if you like yeah but then you just again yeah I, I don't know I, and I also just think on that revenue part I don't think we would cut the gap to the big six by the way just by having 10,000 more fans mm. in a Stadium. I just don't think that was that's kind of remote. I think it's having the opportunity to do all the things like you said, venture out to different other things, yeah. Stuff like that. But the main thing, yeah. the main thing is if your on pitch performance is good, well then you get better sponsors, then you get mm. Champions League revenue, and on pitch performance for me is massively helped as we've seen by playing at Villa Park. Yeah, you. I think your argument is um, valid, although you don't <laughs> believe it, <laughs> but you make good points because a lot of fans are thinking, well, I can't get to the ground or I uh, can't walk for 20 minutes to get to the ground. All these things are completely relevant. Um, and those have to improve. <coughs> but the thought of leaving Villa Park is just something that I couldn't... I can't bring myself to. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you to kind of lift the, the lead. Like I want my... I know this might sound stupid, sorry for cutting you off, but like my kids or whatever and their kids, like they <laughs> don't want to get to many games because it's going to be so <laughs> difficult to get tickets. But once they do it, it's like that is just an experience that you do you know you want them to have that they want to go to the same place that Daddy used to go to. But is in because I know how I felt when I walked into Villa Park, and I still yeah. do feel like that personally. Anyway, I understand the arguments, but I just think right now it's not something that we should be thinking about, and obviously they're not. Yeah, I, I'm with you to kind of. Oh <laughs> yeah, no, I am to like lift the lid on the on the facade of, <laughs> of for and against for the sake of you know there's people out there that will think this is it though because we're trying to give a voice as well. I, yeah, if we just have this conversation, but we need to. We get asked on yeah. Q&As all the time, should we leave Villa Park? Yeah. And we both just go, <laughs> don't be silly, no Exi- way. Exactly. But there will be people that think, no, it is time to move. The, you've got to keep up with revenues. You've mm. got to have access to facilities. You've got to have transport links. Yep. You've got people on a waiting list. They're only going to get in if you've got a, compa- a capacity of 60,000 rather than 42. All these things will add up to some people. That For me, this is, I'm trying to make this argument yeah, yeah. almost on their behalf. Yeah, without us telling you. To, as a conversation. Because I'm with you. I don't want to leave Villa Park. I... I can't stand the thought of going to this lifeless, soulless, yeah. empty kind of bowl thing. And, but as and, I said, and it would be. If it, it would was be. different, then maybe it is, but I, I, I'm with you that I think the transport links are something that Villa almost can't control to an extent. The government have, or the local councils or whatever, have no money effectively to do the things that need to be done, but that can change in five years' time, maybe. The, there is the, 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 the money to get better coach systems or trains or whatever it is, Villa to put three coaches on into yep. back into the city, whatever it is, there's options there. I think if you rebuild the North Stand, fill in the corners of the Doug Ellis, North Stand and Trinity to increase capacity, keep the whole terms its own thing, I think that's the kind of sweet spot of 
new stadium and, and keeping the tradition. So there, there is pros and cons to both sides, but I think to, to end this and, and wrap up this first kind of episode of the debate, as I said, there was a lot of other topics we can go into. I will... Well, obviously, it's difficult for me to say because it's only you and me here. People in the comments will know who's won the argument, but I would give you the the crown of episode one, if you like, to, to have won this debate because kind of I just... I agree with everything you're saying. How can yeah, I? Yeah, no, not no, think I, I agree. Is I the, mean, it's not much of a debate when we're both agreeing with each other, really. But I agree with a lot of your son as well. I just, I mean, as we're in agreement with it, really. But it, right now, you know, yes, those things matter in terms of fans who can't get in the stadium, get in the mm. stadium. But that's just an ideal world that we're living in there. Yeah, you know what I mean. There's everyone wants to watch the team and everyone wants to pay for cheap prices. You can't have those things, though. Yeah, well, I'm giving you the, the customary little pack of Haribo Star Mix as the, uh, Thank you. As the win. Congratulations, John. On Cheers. A, on a <laughs> Congratulations, John, on a, on a good debate. Uh, left me hanging. In the comments, get involved. On um, which side of the debate you fall? Who's made the better argument? Uh, I suspect most people will side with John, but I try to fight the good fight for the people who, who think leaving Villa Park is the, the best yeah. course of action. Stay subscribed to Claret and Blue for more content. Uh, it's Chelsea tonight as this episode comes out, so we'll be doing a post match live stream at Villa Park. tonight at Villa Park. Yeah, <laughs> boo, burn it to the ground. Uh, and then we'll be back later in the week for a Man United preview as well. So thank you for watching this one and we'll see you all again very soon.